My name is Lord Jamar. I'm known from a rap group called Brand Nubian. We came into the game, into the rap game around 1989. We had a, a classic rap album called All For One, which earned five mics in the source, which was pretty special at the time. Uh, we've gone on to put other classic albums out, a lot of hit songs. Uh, I myself have gone on to um, to be uh, involved in film projects, uh, TV projects. I was on Oz, Third Watch. I've done Sopranos, Law and Order. Um, I am a producer. I produce for other artists such as uh, Elton Skelter, OGC. Uh, I discovered the group Dead Prez, put them out. Um, yeah, you know, I'm just all around hip hop, you know what I mean? Dude, and historian, and, and entrepreneur. I started music definitely came first. I started as a DJ, and, um, you know, I'd go from uh, selling tapes to kids at school. Then, I, then it moved into uh, doing house parties, DJing at house parties. Then we, uh, you know, DJing at maybe the high school parties and stuff like that. And running up on mics and stuff. Then I started rhyming, so now I'm running up on mics and block parties and all stuff like that. And I used to be a street type of dude where I was like, you know, dealing in some illegal activities. And a lot of my friends were getting locked up at that time. And so I had to decide, do I wanna pursue my goal, which is to make a record? Because that's all it really was at that time, just make a record and hear your, hear your music on the radio. It wasn't even trying to be rich and all of that often. You just wanna make a record, hear your stuff on the radio, and hopefully artists that you respect will like your music. That's what we was into it for. So, it was like, in order to do that, I'm gonna have to stop doing this, you know what I mean? But doing that, you know, who don't wanna be flashy and all that and have jewels and all that type of stuff, so it's like, I had to put that to the side and just get a little regular job for a while, you know what I mean? Until it popped off, and that's what I did. But always having my goal in mind, uh, I never uh, took a job feeling like, oh, I'm going to get stuck here for the rest of my life because I always had a plan. And that was just a stepping stone to my plan. I mean, as soon as I started DJing, I realized that I was nicer. I was just as good or maybe nicer than people that I'm hearing on records and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And then once I started rhyming, I evaluated the same thing. I, I'm hearing people with records and stuff. I'm like, I'm better than this dude. Like, but he made a record. How did that happen? You know what I mean? So, I don't know. At some point, I was like, I'm going to make a record. You know what I mean? Like, if he could do it, I could do it. You know what I mean? And he was a whole different bunch of people. And the first one to approach me was my man, Daryl C. from the Crash Crew, uh, Rest in Peace. Um, he's the first one that, that really approached me and was like, yo, I want to make a record with you, you know. Might have been like 16, 17 at the time, you know. But they were going through their own things. They were kind of at the end of their career at the time. And he wasn't really in a position to put me on or nothing like that, you know. But then I met Poobah shortly after because we were from the same uh, town or whatever. <clears throat> And then he approached me like, yeah, I think you're dope. I want to work with you, try to uh, make a record with you or whatever, you know? And, um, yeah, so, so that having those uh, affirmations from people who already made records was inspirational too. Because you could start second-guessing yourself and self-doubting yourself, you know what I mean? But it's like... When you get a reinforcement from people that you look up to, it's like that gives you that energy and that fuel to like keep going. Like I, I, I know I'm not bugging. I know, you know what I mean? That I, I am supposed to be doing this. 
and I thought the rap shit was gonna kind of just make me somebody was gonna see me and be like, oh, I wanna put you in the film or whatever, you know what I mean? And then time went by, that never really happened until I said it out loud. See, that's something that 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 helps things happen in the universe when you say things out loud. You know what I mean? Because you could think things in your head, but when you say it out loud, that's what makes it real. Like, so as soon as I said it out loud, I said to my manager, like, yo, I want to be in some films or whatever. Like, get me on something, man. I'm seeing all these rappers that I know can't act as good as me, and they're in all these, you know what I mean, movies and TV shows. I'm like, get me in something. You know what I mean? So he didn't know what to do, but he ended up sending us to, like, the premiere of The Sopranos. When it was first coming out, like, you know what I mean? Nobody knew what it was gonna be or nothing. So we went there, and it was all these people from Oz was at the uh, premiere or whatever, you know what I mean? Turns out a lot of them were fans of Brand Nubian or whatever. So we get cool with some of the people from Oz, you know what I mean? I get cool with my man Dean Winters, the dude that played O'Reilly. And, and we just kicking it, you know what I mean? For the next maybe year or so, just, you know. I might go to a couple parties here and there, we talk on the phone. Bomb, he was mad cool. He even invited us down to the set. And he was and he was like, yo, you wanna get in the scene right now? Y'all can get in the background and some extras or whatever. I said, nah. I'm thinking in my mind, when I when I'm on this show, I'm gonna really be on this show. Like, cause I I, I love the show Oz before I even met these dudes. I was like, I kind of meditated myself onto that show. Like seriously. Um, so yeah, then he hit me up, and he was just like, yo, would you ever want to be on the show? I was like, hell yeah. Hits me up again another time, he's like, yo, the, the creator, you know, he wants to meet with you. I had already met you or whatever, at some parties and stuff. He's like, yo, he wants to meet with you. Boom, bam, boom, goes down there. And now he's just talking to me like I'm on the show already. All we got to do is figure out what my character is and how I got in there. You know what I mean? I didn't have to read or nothing. You know what I mean? And um, the rest was history. Any other rapper that was on there only did two episodes, was the most. And there was quite a few rappers on there. LL Cool J, Tretch, all kinds of them. You know what I mean? But I did 12 episodes. You know what I mean? Season and a half. Like, that's the longest any rap dude was on that show. The first step is just really believing in yourself, assessing yourself realistically. Because there's a lot of people that want to do that, do certain things that are not cut out for you. You know what I mean? You got to be real with yourself too. Once you've assessed yourself and you feel like, all right, this is something I want to do and other people have reinforced, yeah, you're nice, you know, make it happen. You just got to make yourself known, however that may be. Like, you know what I mean? Make a YouTube video, like be creative, like, you know what I mean? There's not really one way to do it. And in your, in your immediate radius, you know what I mean? Where you come from, if those people are not supporting you, that's a problem. You can't do it all on your own, so you are going to need the, 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 the love and support of certain people around you, like, to make it, to make that fire, you know what I mean? But the spark comes from you, you know what I mean? The, the spark comes from you. You gotta spark that to, to make other people get a spark and then cause a, a, an inferno in this bitch. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, just be creative with, with, with how you come with it. Like, you know what I mean? Photoshop you up a, a flyer or you can put out your own mixtape or, you know, your own DVD. And a lot of this stuff doesn't even even have to be a lot of money. You don't have to press it up if you don't want to. Post it somewhere, let people download it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just be creative and, and work within, you know what I mean? Your budget. When I first started DJing, I, I had Mitch Match turntables and all of that. That didn't stop me from DJing. Like, I did what I had to do. Like, you know what I mean? Other dudes had to fly equipment. Like, you know what I mean? Yo, I had to work with I, but I'm better than you, though. But you got the better equipment. You see what I'm saying? Like, but in the, in the long run, I ain't got mismatched turntables no more. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and you probably ain't even got no more turntables. So what's that all? You know what I mean? Like, it's all the power of the mind, man. You know what I mean? The power of the mind manifests and, and, and make things real. <laughs> Hey, yo, peace. This is Lord Jamal. 
brand Nubian in the house with my man Crime. You checking out PSWeTheBest.com. That's how we do it. One. I'm going to call him.